welcome back to Mixplus TV. Hope you're having a great day. Another round of rapid fire Q&A. You guys love this and we are going to keep doing it. Just keep coming with the great questions. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses, for plug-in discounts and great deals. And if you want to support the channel, grab a t-shirt. We have some down there. Let's get to the question by Cadenza Recording. How do you ensure good translation of your mixes across multiple playback devices? Mine sometimes fall apart, particularly on phone speakers. People say not to care about what it sounds like on phone, but that's uh, how so many people will hear it. What's your opinion on that? You should care <laughs> about how your mix sounds on phones, laptops, portable speakers, and all the crappy media people listen to music right now, earbuds. The question is, how do you ensure good translation? That's not easy. That is really not easy. You have to be an experienced mix engineer. You have to have a good monitoring system, meaning a room that you know well, that it's treated well, and you know well, I repeat it again, because it doesn't matter how expensive the monitors are. You can mix on a thousand, two thousand bucks monitors records, but you need to know your environment very well, because that's the key of being able to translate on other media. Um, ideally, you will have different monitor systems. For example, now my room is a mess, but it's going to be finished soon, uh, by the end of the month, actually. So I will reveal it. I will show you. We'll take all this behind me out, and you will see the new desk with all the new gear, like or more than 40 units. But most important, you will see the treatment in the room. You will see that I have a main monitors from Eve Audio, 13 inches, like gigantic main monitors. And then I have a pair of Genlec 1031 um, old model discontinued. Then I have my LP8 Kali, and then I have um, my LP6 Kali, and then I have a bunch of portable speakers. So I'm an experienced mixing engineer, and I have a high-end <laughs> monitoring system. Uh, like the Eve Audio are like soffit mount. They're like this big. You will see them. You saw them when I had them uh, parked at Echo Bar. Those are mine. And they will be here. Um, yet, I do reference on my phone. I do reference on a portable speaker. Let me get it for you. That's my favorite portable speaker. It's called Ultimate Ears. They make a bigger version of this, and I don't like it. I purposely like this one because it's for me, it's like well balanced and uh, not hyped. Uh, it's Bluetooth. I will put the link in the info box down below if you want to get it. It's super cheap. And it's funny because um, with this one and my phone, Kali, I also have the new Kali Bluetooth volume control. So I can hook up a pair of speakers, which I'm going to do. I'm going to have like one side um, monitoring system. I have, I'm going to have my uh, front side with the main eaves and the LP8 and the Gents, and then one side which is going to be hooked up to the Bluetooth for all the additional monitoring systems. So with the Bluetooth, I can just hook this one up. I can, you know, I can input any any device and listen to it with that Bluetooth thing that I will show you. We'll, we'll have a video on it. Uh, pretty brilliant design from Kali Audio. But yes, this is how you do it. And of course, headphones. Uh, you know I use um, my two headphones. These are my main headphones. These are the Status Audio CB1. These are 50 bucks and they are great close back headphones. Um, I'll put the link down below. And I use my trusty Sennheiser HD600. These are a little more expensive, high end. I use them for everything mastering too. So use different reference. Um, don't mix on them you know, pick one or two main monitoring system, which you mix 70% of the time, and then the rest 30% check here and there, leave the room, check on your portable speaker, throw this on the other room and, you know, listen to your mix there. Um, that is that is useful for both experienced engineers because things change. And a few years ago, you know, the crappy media were not the main playback systems. Today it is. So you do care about it. I think what you hear more often from old school mixing engineers is like, oh, I don't care. Uh, half of them, they don't care because they don't know how to 
care, like they don't know what to do. But half of them, ju they just say, I'll make my mix the best that I can in the monitoring system that I know has worked so far, so it will, it's going to work. And that's true. That's true, because in the end, you do check. It tells you things here and there very quickly if you just pop your mix in one speaker on your phone or your laptop. Um, it saves you time. And, um, and also, but also because in the end of the day, if you only have one monitoring system that you trust and know, like the back of your hand, and the mix is balanced there, most likely is gonna be is gonna be sounding the best that it can in any other playback system, in any other media. Which doesn't mean it's gonna sound good, because a mix coming up from here. It's gonna sound bad. Like <laughs> it's not. It's not a media meant for high quality music. You know, reproduction. So it's not just your mix that's not gonna sound great. It's all of them. But if you compare your mix to other commercial mixes and you don't hear the vocals, or you only hear the vocals on the phone in your mix, and you hear everything else on the others, then your mix has a problem. But you know, is the problem is the mixing. The problem is your either the skills or the room where you mix at. You're not gonna mix monitoring through your phone. That's what I'm, I'm getting at. You need to find a monitoring system uh, that you can trust, and then it will automatically translate with experience. But that's why we always say make sure that the main elements, uh, kick, bass, vocals, snare, a main melody, are dead center somehow in the middle and they will not get lost in mono they will not get lost you know in uh, in s small speakers like if you have a bass that just have sub energy and no higher harmonic you're not gonna hear it if you have a kick that is just a mushy sub you're not gonna hear it okay so pay attention to that and if you have a mono media where you play your mix and it, it, things are out of phase, you're gonna lose main elements, that's not okay. You're gonna, in mono, you're always gonna lose stereo effect to some extent, that's normal. But your mix shouldn't be unbalanced. It's not gonna sound great on a speaker this big, but should be balanced anyway. So it's not easy, so it takes time, so get comfortable. <laughs> I hope this answered the question, I hope this video was useful for all of you guys. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave a like. Leave your comments and questions for the next Q&A, rapid Q&A and live stream Q&A. I promise I will set it up. Let me get this shit done first and we'll get to it. I'll get Bella in it because people just ask me all the time about her too. She will be with me there. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.